Well, I'm looking at a picture of some of the photos of when I studied abroad and um, I'm standing in front of the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona and I never even went inside of it. That was a bike tour. I took a picture in front of it. We didn't have time to what? go inside. So that's kind of a regret of mine. Hello and welcome to the Worldwide Honeymoon Travel Podcast, the podcast that talks about all things couples travel, including destinations, tips, advice, and more. I'm Chris. I'm Kat. And this is episode number 205. I think we're finally caught up with the numbering situation that we messed up on. This is episode number 206. <laughs> this is episode number 230. No. Point would... two. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a big problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I, I think we have we have fixed the numbering issue, which is good, mm -hmm. right? I hope so. I hope so too. <laughs> um, what's been going on? Um, you know, last week I feel like I, you know, the I like to call this time of year sort of the doldrums of winter. Um, it's kind of just where like the sky is gray most of the time. And it's very cold outside, so really all you want to do is take a big nap. You know, you just want to hibernate through winter. You sound like a bear. I seriously, bears have it. They've got something right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and I've just lacked so much motivation, and I've been. I mean, it also didn't help that I was updating old posts last week, which is like, it's necessary, but it's not my favorite thing to do to go back and like update everything and it can be kind of a tedious task and just all sorts of things so it's that that didn't help with the motivation i have a question for you about that that's okay in line with the the theme or the topic for today okay is it enjoyable to to go back and do old posts from like a um, a memory standpoint? Like, is it kind of like a walk down memory lane and, oh, I forgot about that or I didn't remember that? Or is it more um, like, I mean, obviously it's for like SEO and all of that kind of stuff. Is it more of a necessity than a walk down memory lane, I guess? Um, well, it's more of a necessity. Yeah. So that, because eventually people are going to start writing similar content and like you, they might outrank you and you, you slip in rankings. So then you want to update your content, and add new stuff. And sorry, not a necessity. Yeah. That was the wrong word. Yeah. Because I mean. obviously it it's a necessity. The rankings. Is it a necessary evil more than it is a walk down memory lane? Um, I mean, sometimes I do read back on my old posts. I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot about that. And then um, it's also very humbling to see posts that you wrote years ago um, that you're like, wow, I'm, I think I've improved. I've grown, yeah. I, I mean, so in that way, you're like, okay, like it's humbling because you're like, oh my gosh, I thought that was great. Um, but it's also like, oh wow, I've definitely grown and changed over the years um, in those terms. So some posts, I, not so much now that I've been doing this for a while now, um, like updating old posts throughout the years. Um, it's not where I like have to gut the post and basically like start from scratch or like redo the most of it. Um, I've had to do that quite a few times, which is very tedious and it does take a lot of time and effort. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I'm done for now doing that. And I was going to write new content. Good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then what about you? What about me? Like, what have I been up to? Yeah. Um, not much. Um, just See the doldrums of winter. Yeah. I will <laughs> say that I, this is not travel related whatsoever. I have been crushing my runs as of late. I was going to say, we just signed up, uh, for a, you, you signed up for the marathon. I signed up for the half, um, the Louisville one. So yeah, I decided to go to that. That'll be a lot of fun. That's our first half marathon slash marathon since 2019. Yeah. We used to run one about every quarter. Yeah. We ran a lot. So I'm like back into training. You're back into training. How does it feel to be back into training? Are you enjoying it or are you like, ah, yes, I remember this? Um, My actually, old nemesis. Well, it's kind of like riding a bike where it does come back to you. Like I haven't, I ran seven miles this weekend on the treadmill, which is not fun. But when it's like 20 degrees Fahrenheit outside, it, you don't really want to, Chris did it. I cannot. If it's like below freezing, I refuse to run outside. It's too cold for me. Um, I ran outside and... There were parts of it that were a lot of fun. There were parts of it that were like ice covered with snow, which was not fun. Mm -hmm. um, there were parts that you could tell were supposed to be muddy, but it was so cold that it was frozen, which was fine. 
um, I took a few wrong turns because I wasn't like watching the blue blazes as I, I was kind of like daydreaming and like and just the blue blazes are the trail markers. Yes. I was just kind of like enjoying my time out there, like looking around. I missed a few turns that were costly. Um, and, um, like one of them, I accidentally didn't turn off and I kept going on a bridal trail. I was telling you about this. And, and this then is I got, why we don't run in the winter I by got, ourselves I in the got, woods. <laughs> I got to, I got to, um, a river and I'm looking at this and I was like, huh, that's pretty wide. Um, it's pretty deep. There's no way that like the trail is supposed to go this way. And I'm looking and like, I was even looking across the river because it was, it, it would have, I mean, it probably would have been up to like my thighs or my groin. Okay. Like if I'm wading across this mm-hmm. and sure enough, I see blazes on the other side, but they're a different color. And I was like, oh my gosh, I must've missed a turn because I am like, yeah, this would be great for horses. Um, this would not be great for me. So, um, there were a few of those or like, um, I would end up like going elsewhere, but I did have a great run yesterday. Um, it was, it was just very nice. In fact, it was my highlight. I said that yesterday's run was my highlight. I saw, um, it was just very peaceful. Like not a lot of people were out, um, let alone on this, um, incredibly hilly trail. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw two deer. And I am like, I am still a child when I see deer. I'm like, ooh, a deer. (laughs) And like, I've seen them, I don't know how many times, but I I don't know. I just like love wildlife, even a squirrel. Like today I was running and I saw a squirrel and I just stopped and watched it. Um, I don't know. I just like it. Squirrels are always funny. Squirrels are great. Yeah. What was your highlight this past week? Um, Well, I was going to just... Yeah, point out too, like we've actually been trying a lot of like alcohol free beverages lately and that's been a lot of fun. That um, has been fun, yeah. Yeah, because I've I've tried all like aperitifs, wines, beers that are alcohol free just to kind of like lessen our drinking. Um, yeah, because like drinking alcohol, like obviously there's all that study now that like basically alcohol is terrible for you and you know, drinking less of it is better and all that stuff. So we've been trying this alcohol free stuff, which has been a fun little journey to try different things. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, and then just planning some trips. As I say that I'm also planning a trip to go to Champagne, France, and I will 100% be drinking champagne while I'm there. Um, but yeah, I'm sweet. So yeah, I've been planning my France trips and other trips for the year. Nice. Yeah. But what's your highlight before? My highlight was the runs and the deer. Okay. The runs being like the physical runs that I was doing outside in the woods. The physical runs. Well, as opposed to Not like... Not to the toilet. Exactly. <laughs> like, I didn't have the runs. Okay. I got to run. Okay. Um, I really liked last night a lot where we... we oh, yeah. We like ordered some food from Mama Santa's, picked it up, and then we watched a movie. We watched The Menu. That was a good movie. Holy crap. At first, I thought it was going to be sort of like a, like a spoof... Are like a mocking satirical spoof of like, you know, Michelin star restaurants. And it was, it's very different than what I thought it was going to be. It was good. <laughs> did you like it? I did. I did. It was very. Would sensual. you recommend it? Sure. Yeah. I would recommend I mean, it. it, it defi- yeah. And then, yeah, going to mix on Friday. Yeah, that was, was fun, fun as too. well. We went out to dinner and we went to um, the art museum here in Cleveland has events um, every month. And that was a lot of fun. But yeah, that's uh, that's what's going on with us. Do All you right. want to get into today's topic? And I'm going to kind of let you lead this one. This was sort of your idea that sparked during one of your runs outside. Yeah. Yeah. I do some of my best thinking when I'm running. Yeah. Um. Okay. So the idea for this episode actually came from just me listening to a podcast yesterday um, while I was on my run called 10 Junk Miles. Mm-hmm. I love this podcast. It is a um, it's a, a running podcast. It deals with um, ultra runs or like long distance runs. Um, and the host was interviewing a gentleman by the name of Davy Crockett, who is very well known within the ultra running community because he is one of the people that has done 100, 100 mile races. Yikes. Yeah, and he he is um, kind of like the the archivist or the record keeper for this kind of stuff too, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
so just a um yeah it was it was like a really really interesting episode and something that he said is um he he was asked the question like when are you going to be done or like when do you know that like eventually like you're going to have to hang it up and something that he said is that he approaches every race like it could be his last he was like i mean i don't know if there's going to be something that happens to me. I don't know if I'm going to get like a terrible injury or something like that. So like, I always try to really, really appreciate the race for what it is. Even like when the highs are high and the lows are low, like you're still out there getting to do something. Right. Mm -hmm. So then I don't know, that just kind of stuck with me. And I was thinking about it, um, today and I was thinking about it yesterday and, um, just kind of going down to the adage that time isn't guaranteed. Right. We always have the intention to return to a place. I mean, it's even something that we ask. Yeah. It's one of the last questions in every destination guide that we do. Would you go back? Um, or quite often also we'll say, OK, um, knowing what you know now, hindsight being 2020, what would you do differently? Right. So there's always that aspect of next time we go, we would do this or when we go next. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to return. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Um. But, I mean, we have probably gone to different places, experienced different things that we never will again. Um, and it, it just kind of goes to that kind of age-old saying that you can't ever go back. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Um, so, one day, you and I will have taken our last trip together. Which makes me really sad to think about. It so does. So when you said this, I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. But, like, I mean... Um, yeah, it, that doesn't necessarily mean that like one of us has like stopped traveling, but it means that one day the two of us will have taken our last trip together. So the question here was how to ensure, like when we are looking back, um, on our lives as travelers, personally, how do we ensure that we have lived a life well-traveled? So it's it's a big kind of ask, right? It's a big question. It's very conceptual. It's it's very reflective. Um, but I feel like so you you put this prompt of what does it mean to live a life well traveled, and it felt like you timed us on what so we wrote. I was going to say that, right? So, but we. It, it felt like one of those on-demand writing prompts that we had to do in like high school and middle school and stuff where they oh. give you a prompt and you have to like write so much and you only have so much time to do it. And that's yeah. what it felt like only bullet points versus like actually like writing a paragraph of repeat the question. What is, um, what it means to live a life well-traveled by doing blah, blah, blah. Right, yeah. right. And <laughs> it's, it's a very personal question, right? Um, and... It's, it's going to be different for everyone, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I, I do think that it is, um, it's an interesting question and it's something important to kind of keep in mind because, I mean, even how we travel today is very different than we traveled um, five or six years ago together. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, I mean, we've had, um, we've had more experiences, we've had more diverse experiences. Well, we've grown and changed as people. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, so... Like you said, this was kind of like a timed note. So we, we had that prompt. We set a timer for 20 minutes so that we weren't um, like kind of dwelling on this or, or thinking like it, it really kind of focused it down. Um, and here we are. Mm -hmm. So since I came up with the oh um, topic, why don't you go first? So... You have, um, you, you probably don't know at the time that it is your last trip or the last trip that we have taken together, right? Um, but maybe like travel has just become more of a burden than an enjoyment. Well, I also looked at it through the lens of like, take COVID for instance, where all the lockdowns happen. Who's to say that won't happen again in our lifetime and we're stuck at home for an unforeseeable time frame? That's a great you know? point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I definitely looked at it through that view because we did go through a time where we were like, I didn't necessarily think it was our last trip ever, but I, there was a time where we did not know if and when we were going to travel both inside of the United States and outside. Yeah. Um, and that was definitely very scary for a little bit, um, or hard. Um, yeah. So, 
I guess, well, I'll, my notes are sort of all over the place. So I apologize in advance for this because I'm a little bit all over the place. So uh, my first was that COVID shaped my worldview quite a bit. Um, I think that before the lockdowns happened, I I think that I put travel kind of at the center of my life is like my big thing. Like I worked in it. I enjoy travel. Like it was something I loved doing both in my personal life, my professional life. It's something I enjoy talking about. And these are still things that I do enjoy talking about. But in the midst of all of these lockdowns, I made travel the biggest part of my identity. And I kind of went through this sort of identity crisis during that time. Like I kind of spiraled a little bit and thanks to a lot of therapy and like trying to find ways to travel from home and like slowly starting to get out into the world again like I started to kind of figure out how to be content in the moment um and not just you know planning that next trip being on that trip and then planning the next trip like how to live life more in the present um also being like you know we're Christians we were going to church more during that time too and we were like okay well maybe we should put God in the center of our life instead of or you know basically don't make travel your entire world um have other things, even if you have a different religions or, or no religion. Um, maybe don't, I, I don't know. I don't know how to kind of conceptualize, like how to explain don't. that, but like, don't make that the center of everything that you are because things change and maybe you are there. Something like that could happen where you can't travel. So yeah, be more in, present in the moment, I suppose. Yeah. And, and I guess don't, don't approach something so one dimensionally either. Yeah, right. Recognize yeah. that there is more to you as an individual than just, whether it be um, like your your career or one hobby or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But I also think that in my earlier years, so this is just departing from the whole COVID stuff. Um, in my earlier years, I used to very much be a country or even a state counter. Like I was like, oh, I've got to visit so many countries, 30 before 30 and like all of that stuff. And um I have a rough estimate of how many countries I've been to now. We sometimes like look at Ben or something and like find it. But like my goal was to visit probably like a hundred countries or several countries as I could. And I feel like I've shaped that worldview into being more of like, I want more experiences, um, not necessarily going to the, like different countries. So it's also enabled me to like revisit places. And I know that there are a lot of places that I've, will never go back to probably in my lifetime as much as I want to. But um, yeah, I'm thankful for the experiences I get to have versus being like, oh, I've got to go hit up that next country that I need to visit. Um, I'm grateful for that. So I think I'm learning to be a lot more content in, in the moment, no matter what. Would I be completely devastated if like another pandemic happened or something happened to where I couldn't travel? Yes. Um, but I've certainly... I don't know. I, I think that I think that I'm like more grateful instead of being like, oh, I didn't visit 100 countries. I'm more grateful for the experiences that I've had. And as yeah. much as there are more experiences I'd like to have, I'm very thankful for the ones that I have had. So being more grateful of that and also just finding more contentment where I'm at, whether it's like at home, we go out to a date night, something like that. Um, But yeah, I also I think to live a life well traveled. I think while we're younger, we do more physically challenging stuff on our trips, like whether that's hiking or, you know, trekking, adventure travel, that sort of thing. I'm, I'm really appreciative that we're prioritizing that now while we're younger. Um, because again, you don't know what the future holds. You know, I, I hope that we're still gorilla trekking in our eighties, but who's to say? So, you know, um, but I also, when we, when we first started traveling together, I noticed that we were very much a let's go and do and see everything. And sometimes you kind of forget the things that you go and see and do when you try to see and do everything. Yeah. And um, yeah. I think more for me, it's about like quality versus quantity. So it's okay to slow down more and relax a little bit. I think Costa Rica was a really good example of that because we definitely spent a lot. We spent like four days in Plain Icuesa. We really slowed down. I got to take a nap. That was great. Uh, we read a lot. We enjoyed the beach. We enjoyed the hikes. I feel like we were really present there, which was great. Uh, we even spent three days on a coffee farm and it was just so relaxing that we felt like we got to experience Costa Rica, but we weren't rushed seeing Costa Rica. Um, 
yeah. So I just, I want to remember specific experiences rather than trying to see it all and see nothing. Um, I, yeah, there are some things I, there are some trips I've taken in the past in my early twenties that I don't really remember a lot of when I think back on it because I, it was just like a blur. That's how much we tried to see and do. Yeah. Yeah. Even like looking through old pictures. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, like there are things that I will have taken a picture of Mm -hmm. that I have no idea what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, like I remember seeing that building, right? Or I remember seeing that statue, but why did I take a picture of it? (laughs) Or like, what was its significance? Like, I remember it being a part of the day, but I don't remember why we went there or I don't remember anything about it. Mm -hmm. Um, and probably because it was more of like, a okay, this is the first stop and then this is the second and then this is the third and mm-hmm. boom, 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 boom. Well, I'm looking at a picture of some of the photos of when I studied abroad and um, I'm standing in front of the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona and I never even went inside of it. That was a bike tour. I took a picture in front of it. We didn't have time to what? go inside. So that's kind of a regret of mine. I need to go back to Spain because I need to go inside Sagrada Familia and I need to go to Granada and see... Um, how am I blanking on this? The Alhambra. (laughs) Yeah. And there's so many other things, but um, yeah, because in that mindset, when I was 21 years old, I was like, oh my gosh, I've seen Sagrada Familia. And if, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but (laughs) Chris, you're the one who speaks Spanish, but, um, but yeah, now I'm like, well, darn, I was right there. Why didn't I go inside? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's actually a great example. Yes. (laughs) Um, on the flip side of that, um, when I said there are some stuff that uh, places I probably won't return to simply because you can't go back and do everything over again. And also time changes and the world changes. For example, right now with Peru, where they're actually saying don't come here a lot of tourists because there are there is a lot going on. Machu Picchu is closed right now. Right. And the fact that just what in 2019 we were able to go and explore Peru. We saw the rainforest. I mean, that was still our top country we visited together and, and travel experience was the Amazon. And to think about a, a such a popular tourist attraction in the world, right? One of the, I believe it's one of the seven wonders of the world, like one of the current seven wonders of the world is Machu Picchu. Yeah. And especially all of the different ways that people can experience it, whether it's through hiking the Inca Trail, whether it's through um, staying at Aguas Calientes and then and then going up, whether it's staying at the hotel at the top, but it it's such a massive draw, um, that no one is visiting right now because it's closed, right? And and it's and it, it makes me appreciate the fact that at one point we got to go see it. Yes, and I hope one day that it'll reopen. I mean, I I, I certainly hope that things get better. Obviously, right? But yeah, that's just there's really no telling it was just like when Notre Dame caught fire yes and you can't I mean they're hoping to reopen it next year for the Olympics but you know for a time we were like we don't know when we'll get back and I'm even looking again I have this like photo collage in our office here that has photos from my study abroad and there are literally two pictures on that wall that those places just don't exist anymore like the Azure window in Malta and Gozo Island yep um, I remember being able to climb on that and take a look at the inland sea and this beautiful, uh, it's this big, huge arch formation, um, in Malta on Gozo Island and it collapsed into the sea a few years after that. And to be able to see it when it was intact is just, I'm very lucky as well as, um, the big bridge with all the locks on it in Paris before they tore it down because it weighed the bridge down. Um, I have a photo of that on the wall and, uh, yeah, that, that's not there anymore. The bridge is there, but the locks aren't there anymore. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it is telling just even in our lifetime so far, things have changed in the last 10 years. I mean, those were, yeah, 10 years ago. Yeah. So yeah, time changes and the world changes. They do. And uh, I hope I'm being somewhat cohesive in this and not just all over the place. No, no, no. This is, <laughs> okay. and see, this is like exactly what I was, um, <laughs> what I was kind of anticipating here because- with with just 20 minutes to prepare yeah. um it really focused us to just kind of um i don't want to say like 
dump all of our thoughts onto a piece of paper, but like the stuff that's at the top is going to come out first. Mm -hmm. Um, But there was no like, okay, here are the five questions you're going to answer. It was, how are you going to respond to this very open-ended and broad prompt? So this is, this is perfect. Okay. And you know, there were videos going around TikTok for a while that said, you know, I, I don't have much money or whatever. The savings will come, the money will come back, but I'll never be like 20 and traveling to France again or something like that. And of course, I think you got to be financially savvy a little bit, you know, and, you know, not go into debt and all that stuff. But there is some truth to that, um, that you're never going to be that age. And if that opportunity is sort of staring you in the face and it's not going to detrimentally like harm you, like mentally, physically, or even financially, um, sure, just do it <laughs> if, if you can. Um, so I think that's something that I've learned over the years. I'm thankful for every trip. Um, yeah, and I, and I also am thankful for the moments um, that my family has been able to travel with us. So whether we went to the Christmas mm, markets with your yeah. parents, I went to the Alsace with my parents and my sister in the South of France, that is the most amount of time I've spent with them individually in years. And I think it's really special to get to have those moments because again, we never know when our last trip will be with our other loved ones too. Yeah. So absolutely. it means a lot to me to, to get to travel with them. I mean, we're going with my parents to South Africa, hopefully later this year, my sister, hopefully coming with me to Normandy. I want to do a trip with my brother at some point too, and get the whole family going somewhere. That'd be great. But it's nice to have those moments. And yeah, I just, uh, I think Another thing that po- I point out to me, I live for the moments and travel where um, there are times where I'll look at like a beautiful sunset or this beautiful mountain view or something like that, where I close my eyes, sort of take a mental picture and I thank God for the experience. And I feel like that is a big thing for, for me now. And um, yeah, I just think a life well traveled is sort of like, I'm very thankful for the experiences I've had, but not dwell on what you haven't done yet, but sure. dwell on what you already have done and enjoy that and appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my only big thing is I would love to live abroad again. <laughs> so that okay. is my biggest goal. Um, but yeah, I, I like the living in the moment and being appreciative for everything I've already done and try to quantity or quality over quantity. That's like my biggest takeaways, I suppose. A good summary. Good summary. I think. Okay. So now it's time for your turn. Are you done? Yeah. I think that's most of mine. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, a lot of mine are along the same kind of theme or, or thought process that you had. So the first thing that I wrote down was that I was prepared and present and I knew my why. Mm. Um, prepared from the standpoint that, and this is kind of a longstanding joke, not only between Kat and myself, but also with me on the podcast, that there are a lot of times when um, we have gone on trips in the past and I will not know what we're doing on any given day. Um, and it's kind of like a surprise to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's absolutely fine. But I do think that one thing I'm very good at is being prepared for a trip from the aspect of um, learning about the destination or the city or what have you beforehand. Um, you know this, obviously, but I always try to um, read a book mm-hmm. about the history or, or the people or what have you, or, or by an author from that country before we go there Mm -hmm. just to learn more about it. And I, I think that that is so valuable, Mm -hmm. um, whenever I go, um, knowing my why, why am I going to this destination? Right. And this kind of goes towards, um, what you were talking about, like whether it's country counting or state counting or what have you, um, we have a scratch off map. Um, and, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a prominent feature in our home. It's hanging on our living room wall. We have pictures from our travels all around it. There was a time when that really stressed me out. I remember that. Yeah. You because would just stare at the map and be like, we have to go to like Antarctica and all these huge countries and knock them out and like get to see them and cover the map. Right. And now I'm very much at peace with, um, like no matter what I do, even if I scratch off every country on that map, it doesn't necessarily mean that I've experienced every country or that I've even experienced, like, no matter what, um, it's, it's that song from, um, or that line from the circle of life, mm-hmm. 
which I love that um, this line is there's more to see than, than can ever be seen and more to do than can ever be done. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know you're never going to see everything. Right. Yeah. So just like kind of being at peace with that, knowing my why. And look, I mean, let's say that um, we have gone to every state but one. Maybe my why to go to one state is to is to have experienced all 50 states. That's yeah. fine. But just to like understand the why, I think, yeah. is well, is important. And I think like... Would I love to visit all 50 states? Yeah. I'm not like pressuring myself to do it by a certain time frame. But no, no. It'd be great. I'd like to. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, And then also being present. And this is something that you were um, talking about as well. And something that I also commented on when you were chatting was appreciating the scenery, stopping to smell the roses, mm -hmm. not just going from A to B to C um, and taking a picture of A to get to B to get to C. Like, mm -hmm. Trying to um, pack as much as possible into a day is not um, is not really what what I'm about anymore. Yeah, and I will say that was much easier to do in your 20s when you can sleep on a like flat, uncomfortable futon couch for a night. Right. Um, after drinking, getting like two hours of sleep, and then you can go nonstop the next day sightseeing. Um, now at 32, um, I'm gonna need at least five pillows and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to need a couple of extra pillows and a nice actual bed and um, probably about eight hours of sleep or I will not function the next day. There you go. <laughs> um, so, yeah, being prepared, being present, knowing my why, that was the first thing I wrote down. Yeah. The second thing I wrote down was that I experienced destinations, not companies. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of companies that um, not only that you have worked with that we that we really really enjoy traveling with, mm -hmm. um, but also just kind of thinking more and and maybe this goes more towards our recent trip to Saint Lucia, right? Is um, when you go somewhere, are you experiencing that place or are you experiencing what insert resort name here um, wants you to remember that place as? Right. So like, are you are you experiencing um, a destination if all you're experiencing is this tiny private plot of land um, that that really isn't the destination in and of itself? Because there it's it's not necessarily um, borderless because people can't just come and go as they please. Yeah. I you mean, know that's what I mean? different travel styles, too. It is different yeah. travel styles. Yeah. But like for me, like yeah. a life well traveled is I want to make sure that that I experienced, um, whether it's a city or a town or a village or an area and not a resort, a hotel, mm -hmm. what have you, and their version of that area, if that makes sense. Um, the third is that um, I was grateful and did not take a return trip for granted. Um, it's really easy to forget that travel is a privilege, mm -hmm. right? Whether that's from a health perspective whether that's from a financial perspective. Um, I mean, circumstances could change where a return trip is not for granted. I mean, how many times have we said that, oh, well, we can't wait to come back and eat here again and blah, blah, blah. Like, um, And just to, again, like be more present, be in the moment and not take that return for granted. Mm -hmm. um, number four is that I traveled both selflessly and selfishly. Okay. Um, selflessly, meaning that I did not want to dissuade you from your dreams. Mm -hmm. So if there's, I mean, if there's things that you want to do or experiences that you want to have that aren't necessarily in line with um, some of the things that are at the top of my list, I don't necessarily want to like subconsciously or consciously dissuade you from doing those just so I can experience more that I want to do. Yeah. Um. At the same time, I don't want to be afraid to not experience things that I want to do on my own. Whether that's like we're both in the same destination and maybe I want to do something that you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of being able to travel, quote unquote, selfishly in that moment sure. um, to make sure that that I'm also doing what I want to do. Yeah. Um, or seeing what I want to see and not necessarily feeling as though that like, unless it's both of us doing it, that I cannot do it. Mm -hmm. um, the next one I wrote down is is just kind of 
I guess, a, a broad um, theme, but that the world made me smile wider, made my heart bigger, and made my understanding deeper. And in turn, I made the world a smaller place. Yeah. So making I really like that. Yeah, making making me more patient, making me happier, um, just making me realize that that we are but like a speck, mm-hmm. right? But in also in return, making the world a smaller place. Um, whereas, I mean, I think that the podcast is a perfect example. I think your entire career is a perfect example in that. Um, you you have these conversations and you're able to to share stories about destinations that um, if people are inspired to go there, that's great. But even if they they hear about it, mm-hmm. um, I think that there's just a, a greater understanding um, amongst people of the world when they kind of realize that just because there's a country on the other side of the world doesn't mean that what they're going through doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And then I just kind of started writing things. Oh. Um, so those were the more philosophical Well, just kind of um, to go off of what you're talking about, like making like understanding of the world. I did write down um, to have a respect and greater understanding of the world and different cultures and backgrounds, but also where you're from. Did you not finish your list? Um, you know, I kind of had to paraphrase it because I had a lot. I was all over the place. This was me trying to like organize my list while speaking on this podcast. But I wrote that down um, because it's not just a thing to to get the world. But I think sometimes we forget about where we're from. And I'm from like a very small town. But I feel like, I don't know. I feel like traveling the world has made me appreciate where I'm from and, you know, the culture there, if that makes sense. So one thing I wrote down is that I came to know my own country. Yes. Yeah. This is something that you and I often talk about is that, when we think travel, we automatically think outside of the borders. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, we live a 15-minute drive from one of our nation's national parks. Mm-hmm. And I don't necessarily know all of the history or what have you of, of the area that we currently live in, um, the national park, my own country. So that was something I also wrote down was that I came to know my own country. I wasn't so yeah. focused on on everything else that I didn't have a full appreciation for where I was. Yeah. Cause yeah, the U S is massive. It is massive. I think we have every biome yeah. on earth. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's so much to see and um, it, it's nice to get that sort of an appreciation and want to actually see what's in our country too. Like our backyard as well as abroad. Agreed. Yeah. Um, so this is where it kind of gets um, a little bit funny. Well, actually, I'll do, there's like another, like more like serious, thoughtful, reflective one. Um, and then I'll, I'll go to the others. Um, I said I felt challenged when I traveled, whether it's my worldview, whether it's my perspective, um, and that I was not afraid to confront history. Mm, yeah. That's something that I think that, I mean, even um, chatting with some of our friends, I mean, there's... There's nothing, um, I mean, there, there's no getting around the fact that there have just been some absolute atrocities mm-hmm. that have happened in the world, right? Um, both, I mean, in other countries, in our country, I mean, everywhere. And to to kind of, I guess, have a greater appreciation for that or not shy away from having those experiences um, to to learn more about that, even if it is kind of like an uncomfortable conversation. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, that was just something I wrote down. Um, I already said I came to know my own country. I made a list of wildlife that I'd like to see. Hey, this is, this is how this I was is approaching just a personal it, list. Right. So there you go. <laughs> um, a lot of them I have already been lucky to lucky enough to see. Um, An orangutan. An orangutan is on there. A tiger. And these are things in the wild, right? This is not like me going to the zoo. Um, A tiger is on there. An orangutan is on there. Anything else that you can... A polar bear. Polar bear is on there. Um. Hint. I have seen this when I was younger. A black bear. Or not a black bear. A uh, grizzly bear. There you go. And then there's two others. A narwhal. No, but man, that's a good one. Right? 
Um, a um, bull moose. Oh, yeah, because we've only seen females. Yes. Yeah. A bull moose and a walrus. Oh, that'd be cool. I would really like to see a walrus. I'd like to see an emperor penguin and a panda. Okay, I don't know if you You have already had your list. I'd love to see a panda. I think a panda would be really cool, But I don't know how easy you could find them in the wild. I just know that there's, like, a lot of, like, research, like, Chengdu Research Center in China. If you want to see a panda in the wild, we will trek until we see... I don't know if that's an option. Well, baby wants, baby gets. But I will just carry a lot of bamboo and uh, hope for the best. (laughs) Here, panda, 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 (laughs) panda. Um. I did write down that I would like to see all seven continents. Yes. Yeah. Um, even Antarctica. And Antarctica is the one that honestly scares me the most. Because of the Drake. Could be the Drake Lake yes. or the Drake Shake. Because I have... Um, really bad uh, motion sickness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I know that that could be two days of just like Tossing absolute... Tossing your cookies. Yes. Um, yeah. I feel like... Not to be finishing your sentences, but when we did go cage diving, diving in South Africa years and years ago, um, you you did toss your cookies quite a bit afterward. And Only after I put something in my stomach. I know, but like we're going to be out there for several days. At least you know, you know. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Take a lot of Dramamine. Hopefully you just sleep the whole time. Just take some Dramamine and like. I'm going to make my own little cocktail of whatever colored pills I can and then just like wake up three days later. <laughs> like I'm, what is that guy that fell asleep in the forest? Was that Rumpelstiltskin? No, Rip Van Winkle. Rip Van Winkle. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think Antarctica is really, really cool. Um, I would love to go see that. To that same kind of a, um, effect, I guess, I would like to scuba dive. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to go deep in the ocean. I don't necessarily have the same um, longing to like explore space. I don't know. Yeah. Like to the extent that that was even like available in our lifetime. The ocean. It just seems risky to me. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I don't. I do not shy away from like risky situations. To me, sometimes that makes me feel like alive. Like the adrenaline or like the rush that like this, this could end poorly. <laughs> um, yeah, there you go. But um, scuba in like going down into the ocean, that's something I, I would love to do. I think 30 feet is like where I'm good. I don't need to go into the deep, deep ocean. Oh. Ocean. Ocean. <laughs> well, we will make sure to keep you in the shallow ocean. I'd like that. All right. <laughs> um, I also just started writing down a list of countries. Sorry, just saying Ushin reminded me of um, when our nephew David, when we were talking about Glacier National Park, and he's like, Glacia. Glacia. I don't know why. That was the only word that he made this weird accent for. Not weird accent. I don't know what he was trying to do, but he was like, yeah, Glacia. And I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I made a list of countries that I would like to see for, for whatever reason. It's not necessarily like all encompassing, but I just, I wrote down all seven continents and then I was like, huh, there's like a list of countries too. I'm sure that I would like Mm -hmm. to see. And I just kind of like gave myself like, okay, I'm going to write some down. Um, Yeah. If I did that, I would just keep going. And then like, I got to limit myself. Well, I did limit myself um, to like 10 or 15 seconds. Okay. But I wrote down Cuba, Russia, Mm -hmm. Argentina. Not right now, obviously. Right. Argentina. Israel, okay. Jordan, China, okay. Japan, Egypt, and Australia. Yeah. For whatever reason, those were the ones that were like calling to me in the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, I also wrote down that I lived abroad. Oh, really? Yeah. I think that that, again, like Yay. going, and I think <laughs> that that ties into like the world made me smile wider, my heart bigger, my understanding deeper, all of that kind of stuff. Um, I have never lived outside of my own country. I have actually never lived. You never lived outside of Ohio. I was going to just say well, that. Well, other than as a child when you were born right. in San Diego but and then like, you lived in San Antonio for like a tiny bit. Yeah. Since the age of like six or seven, I have not lived outside of Ohio. Mm-hmm. Um, I am very comfortable in like what I know. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I think that it would give me a greater appreciation for not only people who have to like relocate, whether it's state to state or a new city or what have you, but certainly a being country. a new country. 
I'm yes. really thankful that I did study abroad, but I would like to live abroad for a longer period than six months. I mean, six months yeah. was a good amount of time to, to you go through like that whole like phases. You go through a bunch of phases when you live abroad for like six months or more. Like the first month or two is like that honeymoon phase when you're like, oh my gosh, everything's amazing. Everything they do is amazing. The food's amazing. It's just the cultures, everything's amazing. And then you get to like that, like two, three months where you'll get annoyed by everything and you get very homesick. Like you're like, oh my gosh, I cannot get good peanut nachos. Butter. Peanut butter. I missed peanut butter. My parents literally shipped me peanut butter. Um, I missed like really good chips and salsa and like just Tex-Mex food in general. I really, really missed that. And like... I don't know. I missed all. And then it was also complicated because like I wasn't fluent in French. So it was like really hard that way. Like I remember crying, trying to explain something to somebody, but they didn't speak English. I didn't speak French very well. And it was just like they, they didn't understand me. And it was really frustrating. And when I get like frustrated with myself, I cry. So I was like crying and like had to run away because I was like, I don't know what to do. Do you speak French better now than you did when you lived there? Yes. 100%. That's cool. Yeah. That's um, really neat. Yeah. It gets to the point now that every time I visit France, I feel better and better about it that's um, great like this last time that i went it sort of clicked for me and i was able to like i can understand people i like received directions and gave directions at different points during my trip which was in french which was fun that's cool but like i can actually have like small conversations and stuff which is cool uh not fluent but i'm getting there um but yeah and then you kind of get to this point of understanding at the end of studying abroad where you're like okay this makes sense like they do things their way that's their culture that's fine you can respect it and then you're like okay things are different there's differences obviously and then like I don't know you just kind of like you know you kind of accept the fact there's going to be like different things that are going to be different and then you yeah. are fine with it I don't know you kind of come full circle after a while you know yeah yeah I, like I thought it. that was very interesting um da, 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 da. I lived abroad the last thing I wrote down mm-hmm and this is something that I wrote down because I was thinking about running. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things about running is that but for a group of like 10 people at any given race, everyone else knows that they are not out there to win it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, the vast majority of people are just out there because they want to be out there. And it's such a supportive, like inspiring, emotional experience. Um, it's something that I realized yesterday when I was listening to that um, to the Ten Junk Miles podcast that I really, really missed about running is that just the environment around race days. Everyone is supportive. I mean, um, whether it's like all of the volunteers or whether it's the spectators or what have you, right? It's not like the spectators are quiet until their family member or their friend is coming by. They're cheering for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I just think that it's it's such like a beautiful moment mm -hmm. because, I mean, you don't know whether um, they work for like your biggest competitor or you don't know if they work for... Um, I don't know, they could work for a client of yours that decides that they are going to be switching their services to someone else. Like in, in like the day to day, they could be working or they could believe something that you don't believe and you would just like write it off. But like for, for a brief moment, everyone is in it together and I absolutely love it. I wrote down that I would like to experience an international athletic competition, whether it's a World Cup, Aww. whether it's an Olympics, but something there Come where... Come Paris with me next year for the Olympics. Yeah, or like we've talked about um, going to the World Cup, but like, um, am I going to root for the U.S.? Yes. But does that mean that I am going to um, like degrade or be... Um, like incredibly hostile toward other nations. No, like I feel like everyone's there. Everyone is just so excited that that their team is there, right? Mm -hmm. They have they have pride. You get to interact with fans that are have uh, um, presumably similar interests. Mm -hmm. um, I just think that it would be very very neat, especially because like you would probably attend events or matches or games or what have you that are not just for the country that you're rooting for, right? So to to have that sort of allegiance as well, um, I think would be really, really neat. So that was that was the last thing that I wrote down here. Nice. Yeah. This was, I, I had a lot of fun with this. I know, this was a really fun idea, but 
yeah, this is our personal opinions on, on how we would like to have a life while traveled, what that means to us. Um, I'm interested to see you guys' perspectives as well. Yeah. If you guys took 20 minutes and used the prompt, what does a life while traveled mean to you? Um, and let us know. You can always reach us on Twitter at WW Honeymoon, Instagram at Worldwide Honeymoon, or email cat at WorldwideHoneymoon.com. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to rate and review our podcast. It takes less than a few minutes and really helps other people find us. Also, if you're enjoying this awesome free information on both the blog and podcast, when you're booking your next trip, head over to WorldwideHoneymoon.com slash resources and use the links provided. We earn a small commission at no cost to you when you book through these links, and these are all brands and companies we know, love, and use, like Skyscanner for finding the best flight prices, World Nomads for the best travel insurance, TripAdvisor for hotel bookings and reviews, and even Amazon for all of your travel purchases. Thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Wherever you are, wherever you go, remember to make every day a worldwide honeymoon.